Hi, I'm Duncan McIntyre with the South Central Connecticut American Job Center. We're going to be talking about formatting your resume and beating the applicant tracking system. Remember, your resume has one function. That is to get you a phone call for an interview. That's the end of it, to get you a phone call. Many people who I have seen have a resume that is written like a book. It is not the time to tell your entire life story. You need a nice, tight, concise resume that will get you a phone call and ultimately an interview so you can get the job of your dreams. Now, before applying for a job, you want to consider a few things. Do you have between 90 to 100 percent of the skills required by the job posting? What do you know about the company? Do you feel like you will fit in with the culture of that company? And whom do you know that can help you get an interview? To save time when you're going through job leads, look at the location and the qualifications first. Then you will quickly know whether or not you should even take the time to apply for that job. Now, what is an applicant tracking system? Many companies today are using what is called the ATS to scan your resume for keywords to see if you are a match for their open position. If your resume does not make it through the applicant tracking system, no human will ever see your resume. Now, let's talk about formatting your resume for the ATS. You're going to want to create your resume in Word and save it as a doc or a docx. Avoid saving your resume as a PDF unless it is specifically requested. Many ATS cannot read a PDF because they see it as a picture. It's not recommended to use headers or footers. Optimize your resume with keywords that you can find in the job description. Avoid images, charts, and other graphics. Use simple, easy to read bullet points, and resumes look best when you use an 11 or 12 point font. Use the bold feature sparingly and avoid using the italics feature. Try to keep your resume from one to two pages long at most. You're going to want to highlight the last 10 years of employment. If you have relevant skills that go beyond that, I suggest putting a skills section at the top of the resume where you can list those skills as they apply to the job that you are interested in. Remember, most HR people will look at the top one-third of a resume before making a decision to put it aside for review later or discard it. So make sure that you sell them in the top one-third of your resume. Now, how long do you think an HR person looks at the average resume? The correct answer is six seconds. That's the first time. Within six seconds, they have decided if they will put your application aside for review or if they will not ever look at it again. So let's take a look at some resumes and decide which ones you think will get you a job, which ones will pass through the applicant tracking system. This resume has way too much information and it's too busy. It is a dated template from years ago and is very difficult to read. This one is for John Doe, a web and graphic designer. It may be a good fit for that particular job. However, it is difficult to read and it will never pass through the applicant tracking system. This resume should be aligned left for easy reading. The objective is out of style. Never use an objective on your resume. It is preferable to have a professional profile or a summary. This resume is also very bullet heavy. The more bullets you have, the less power they have when someone is reviewing your resume. This resume, although it's very pretty, will not get you an interview. Keep in mind that every space on your resume is precious real estate. These fonts are not professional, it's missing information, and it's missing a skills section. This resume is absolutely the right one to go with. It has lots of white space, making it easy to read. It has a good use of bullets, a 12-point font. It's easy to read and has no long sentences. Keeping in mind with your fonts, you always want to use a sans serif, Arial, or Times New Roman. And as we said previously, an 11 or 12 point font works best. In your resume, there are certain weak words that are passe, they have been overused. You don't want to say things like team player, 
high attention to detail, people person, they're old, overused, not effective. Use action words and say what you have done. Things like spearheaded, upgraded, transformed, initiated. Those words show action. For a full list of these action words, check the website at workforcealliance.biz. For your keywords, you can always pull those from the job description and use industry standard keywords. Always use a cover letter. A cover letter allows you to write a compelling case for your candidacy for the job. Sending one demonstrates that you are a motivated candidate. Templates can be found at the American Job Center. So some final thoughts about your resume. Always ensure that there are absolutely no spelling, grammar, or punctuation errors. Revise your resume and your cover letter with appropriate keywords for every job application that you complete. Never lie about employment gaps. They have got to be represented on your resume. Volunteer activities always look great on your resume. List your highest completed education level and don't use an objective. Instead, use skills, summary, or a professional profile. A great resume and cover letter will lead to an interview, which will lead to your dream job. We look forward to working with you more at the South Central Connecticut American Job Center.